Number 10. The HMVS Cerberus The HMVS Cerberus is the only intact colonial warship in Australia. This strange, rotten vessel may have never seen any real legit action, but it's been a part of Australia since before it was even a country. The ship was named Cerberus after the ferocious three-headed dog that guards the entrance to Hades, aka Hell. The 225-foot-long warship was built in 1870 for the colony of Victoria. It was actually the first breastwork monitor, an innovation of designer Edward James Reed. The ship included a central armored structure that contained rotating gun turrets, funnels, the bridge, and all the other necessary operational pieces. This both lessened the chance that the ship would be sunk by large breaking waves and also placed its weapons at a strategically elevated height. But those weapons were never actually tested. Yes, the Cerberus once served in the Victorian Naval Forces in the days when Australia was still a British colony, but almost a century ago in 1924, there was no more use for the ancient vessel and it was just left off the coast of Black Rock. The ship was sold for a measly price of around $400, but the person who purchased the ship simply stripped all the valuable metal and then sold the hull for $150. The ship was then scuttled in Half Moon Bay in 1926 to be used as a breakwater. There was some talk about removing the ship from in front of what now stands as the Black Rock Yacht Club, but that's never going to happen. The HMVS Cerberus has been deemed too important of a historical attraction, even if it is slowly turning into an ugly trash heap. Number 9. Shipwreck at the Bottom of the Lake Scuba diver Scott Hill is a retired captain for the Rochester City Police Department. In 2014, he went diving at Canandaigua Lake in New York, never expecting to solve a mystery. But as he was exploring the underwater world of the lake, he came across something that had been lost for over a century. According to Scott himself, the visibility in the lake that day was incredible, with the water looking just like glass. When he reached the northern end of the lake, he could see pretty much to the bottom in perfect clarity. Thanks to such great visibility, he spotted a shipwreck. Scott didn't know what shipwreck he had found at first. He had to go back home and do some pretty serious research, and also a few more dives to make sure he was actually correct. As it turned out, he had discovered the Seneca Chief, a steel yacht that arrived at the lake in 1887, but the yacht only lasted shy of two decades. It was towed deep into the water and sunk on purpose for outliving its usefulness in 1896. It sat at the bottom of the lake ever since, with nobody even knowing it was there. Number 8. The Lost Village of Kuran the underwater village of Kuron has been lost for seven long decades, but after 70 years submerged, it reappeared briefly in 2021. Locals were quite shocked to see the ruins of this mysterious town for the first time since it was submerged in 1950. All that time underwater has done so much damage that the ruins look far older than they really are. For the brief time the village was visible, it looked like a soggy medieval town that had been abandoned five centuries ago. How cool is that? The village of Kuron is located in Italy. It was submerged on purpose to create an artificial lake. The locals obviously weren't too happy about it, but the project moved forward anyway. 150 families, equaling about 1,000 people, were immediately displaced by floods. The only reason it became exposed last year is because construction crews had to drain the lake to perform maintenance. After they were done fixing whatever the issue was, the lake was flooded once more and the village became submerged again. Number 7. Lost Wedding Band Teenager Georgia Morris was snorkeling at Redgate Beach in Western Australia during a terrible heat wave. There were plenty of other people swimming in the water too. It was a very busy day and everyone was just trying to beat the heat. As Georgia was making her way out of the water after a good swim, a glint of something caught her eye. Like Smeagol finding the ring, she dove to the bottom of the surf and pulled a glittering ring out of the sand. She showed it to her mom, who told her it was probably somebody's wedding ring. So many people swim in that area, it wouldn't be surprising if someone had lost their precious ring. So Georgia took the inscription written on the ring and posted it on their local community Facebook group. 
It didn't take long for someone to reach out. A couple messaged Georgia and said they lost that very ring 18 years before. It was Mark Dittmar who'd lost his wedding band back when his wife was still pregnant with her son who is now 19 years old. It was shocking for them to be reunited with a lost wedding band after almost two decades. They had never thought they'd see it again. Number 6. Sunken Whiskey An underwater treasure hunt ended in the discovery of some very old whiskey at the bottom of the lake. Dave Davidson, Dieter Mueller, and Adam Bloxel went diving in Otter Lake to find a lost stash of whiskey that went missing in 1964. According to Dieter, the whiskey was lost when his neighbor crashed a boat into the dock late in the middle of the night. Dieter tried to locate the bottles when he was a teenager, but never managed to find them. Now, as an old man, he decided to take one more stab at finding the whiskey, and he brought a few friends along for the trip. A total of three whiskey bottles were brought up from the bottom of the lake. The labels had disintegrated, but it was still good stuff. And because the whiskey was lost in 1964, most likely aged 12 years at the time, it would now be nearly 70 years old and that much more delicious. Would you drink whiskey found at the bottom of a lake? I know I would. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button before the end of the video. Number 5. Bell Island Mine The Bell Island Mine is one of the most unorthodox places a person can go diving. It was just recently that a local diving adventure company called Ocean Quest took an interest in the mine. The company, based in Newfoundland, will now start taking their customers on epic journeys through the flooded mine in the middle of Conception Bay. It's epic, creepy, and not for those who are easily spooked. The mine itself is freaky enough without strapping a mask onto your face and breathing through a tube while swimming through it. It was originally closed in the 1960s, but the section open for exploration was originally closed in 1949. There's still rails inside, iron ore cars, and tools left behind. If this all sounds dangerous, that's because it is. The company had been planning to take tourists deep into the flooded mines for years. But an American diver's death here in 2007 derailed their plans. The diver named Joe Steffen died from an air embolism while exploring the lost mine and was dead before he hit the surface. Number 4. Scotland's Atlantis Underwater archaeologists have found over 200 mysterious objects in the North Sea off the coast of Scotland. These objects are part of Scotland's own Atlantis, an underwater world by the name of Doggerland. This mysterious land was once above water, a bridge connecting the United Kingdom to Europe. It was home to tens of thousands of people before sea levels rose and it was lost forever, turning the United Kingdom into an island and separating it from Europe. Researchers believe it was an enormous tsunami that drowned the whole area 8,200 years ago. Throughout history, fishermen have been dredging up random objects in the area. They've found skulls of humans, the bones of mammoths, and even fossilized hyena poop stuck in their fishing nets. More recently, archaeologists went searching for their very own artifacts. They've now discovered a deer bone with an arrowhead still stuck in it, a piece of a young male Neanderthal skull, along with heaps of prehistoric tools and weapons. There's now no doubt that a rich community lived here in Doggerland, but that they all met their untimely fate at the watery hands of a devastating tsunami. Though, still, researchers can't say exactly how big the settlements here were, nor just how many people were living in the area when it was hit by a wall of water. Number 3. Artifacts from the Song Dynasty During the Song Dynasty of China between 960 and 1279, a cargo ship was lost in the depths of the South China Sea. It sank to around 70 feet below sea level, where it remained unseen by human eyes until it was discovered in 2007 by archaeologists. Ever since, divers have been recovering pieces of its lost cargo. It's ended up being one of the most impressive ancient vessels ever explored.
Not only is it amazingly preserved, but it's huge, and its amazing relics are seemingly limitless. Archaeologists have found all sorts of stuff, from gold, silver, and copper pieces of treasure. They've also discovered pots and bowls produced by kilns throughout China, in places like Fujian and Zhejiang. What makes these things so fascinating is that many of the artifacts still have the names of the shops from which they were sold written on them. It's like finding ancient pieces of jewelry with the tags still attached. Number 2. The Yankees Minor League Stadium In 2021, the Yankees Minor League Stadium in New Jersey was lost completely underwater. It happened overnight during a sudden storm. It was the aftermath of Tropical Storm Ida, and it completely submerged the TD Bank ballpark in Bridgewater Township. The playing field, the spectator stands, and even the parking lot. The water did recede after the storm, but the stadium sustained major damage. For those living in the area, they never imagined they would see the day when an entire stadium ended up underwater, like in some post-apocalyptic movie. And yet, it happened, and it could happen again. Next time, the water may not recede. Next time, the entire New Jersey shoreline could find itself in the same position as Scotland's Doggerland 8,000 years ago. A watery graveyard. That's a scary thought. Number 1. Captain Cook's Endeavour Just off the coast of Rhode Island in the United States, the Australian National Maritime Museum claims to have found the lost ship of the famous Captain Cook. We're talking about the HMB Endeavour. This was the vessel used by explorer Captain James Cook to reach Australia and New Zealand on a journey from 1768 to 1771. According to the director of the museum, Kevin Sumption, he and his team have been looking at all the 18th century shipwrecks near Rhode Island, where they believe the Endeavour sank. They've been investigating the area since 1999. They've looked at the archaeological evidence and historical records, and now they feel confident that one specific piece of wreckage is the boat they've been searching for all along. The museum says only about 15% of the vessel remains today, with the rest of it having been destroyed by two centuries underwater. However, US researchers are not so sure. They have slammed the museum as making the announcement prematurely. They say there is no factual evidence that the piece of wreckage at the bottom of the ocean is in fact the Endeavour. They say it could be any boat from the 18th century, but the Australians are standing by their announcement. How soon do you think major modern cities will be totally underwater? Let us know your theories in the comments section below, and thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back real soon for more awesome videos. See you soon. Bye.